In this video, we are gonna be covering what's going on in the crypto and NFT markets, some of the hottest mints that are happening right now, as well as some major thought-provoking updates on some of our favorite projects. So first thing we gotta cover is what's going on in the markets. So Ethereum, pretty much trading sideways in that 1.5, 1.6 range. It did pump a little bit. And then when we're looking at all the different altcoins, for the most part, everything is trading sideways. So from my personal opinion, there's not like a lot of new interest going into crypto. There's not like a bunch of people wanting to buy NFT suddenly. In fact, NFT volume, according to most measurements, are down for the most part, probably 90% more down compared to all-time high. I think there, there are some people trickling, a lot of people trickling out, and that's just the nature of the game. So in the short term, yes, it's a little difficult to just buy something and have it pump, but when you kind of learn these skill sets, understand what pumps, what doesn't, what is a good project, what's not a good project, then during a bull market, you're definitely in a advantageous situation where you have a lot more knowledge than the average person, right? For the most part, people are kind of fearful and they're just like, yeah, you know, when Ethereum is like 600 to 800 dollars. That's when our dollar cost average in. And if it gets there, I'll probably do that as well. Not financial advice, but that's pretty much the sentiment that is going on. But of course, even with that said, you know, that's on the retail side of just regular people like you and I. But for a lot of larger companies, they are investing in startups, they're investing in teams, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars in some cases, depending on the situation, into building infrastructure, building games, different IP in the web three space. So even though things are kind of bleak right now. A lot of companies are actually setting up for that next bull run. And because these are the companies that kind of make the market in some senses, I'm pretty optimistic about the future. Otherwise, you know, all this money is just going to evaporate, right? And by the way, guys, we just started our audio version of our podcast on Spotify and iTunes. So if you're someone that listens to podcasts on the go, make sure to check out the Parallax podcast. Links in the description. We're on Spotify, Apple, you know, pretty much everywhere. So make sure to check that out. The first project we are going to be talking about is going to be Utes and D Gods. Now, as you know, you recently just minted, so you have to use dust to mint these Ute Mint tube. Right now, the price for one of these is going for 4.7K, which is quite a bit for a brand new mint that using dust, which is their native currency. For the most part, the price of a D-God did drop, you know, now it's like 16K, 14K, whereas literally yesterday it was pretty much like 19, 20K. The price of a D-God is going to decrease when everybody gets that, you know, mint and they have the opportunity to make that money and sell it or whatever the case is. And like, you kind of just like move the value of some, one thing and move it to the other thing. So the big news that happened after the mint was that dust labs, which is the company is doing D-Gods and doing Utes. It's basically a software company at this point, right? Uh, has raised $7 million in a seed round, right? So this is a seed round. It's not a series A, so it's like the early stages. So it's interesting because this company has been doing a lot of stuff for actually like almost a year now. And then now they only raised $7 million or announced it at least. Maybe they raised it before. There are a lot of big companies here, FTX Ventures, Solana Ventures. So obviously, you know, the bigger players in the space want this project to succeed and they will do things to make it succeed and connect them to the right people. So the way I look at it is, you know, this is gonna be a, like an all out software company. They're doing a lot of experiments. They're doing a lot of things to build interest. They definitely know how to do marketing and, and get people excited about a project. They know how to increase the prices of the floor. And so now with all the attention, what are they gonna do with it? Not just DGOTs, but like any project, whether it's like a Bored Ape, Azuki, Artifact Clone X even. There's always this game of like creating asset, pumping the floor, doing airdrops and things like that. And there's like these interesting mechanics to get people excited. Everybody feels like, oh my God, it's free money. And then they have to keep increasing demand. Some people might say like, oh, it's Ponzi. Like, I wouldn't say it's a Ponzi. I think it's just like creating value one place and then like kind of creating new projects to create value out of that. But I think in the end, what needs to happen usually is that there has to be some kind of product, some kind of service that people actually use. Otherwise it has to keep going forever and you can't always get the demand in all the time, right? And so for Dust Labs, if they're creating a software product, it kind of makes sense that, you know, they do all these like NFT things, all these mechanics. So in the end, that someone will actually use a product or service that will, they will pay money for and consume without an intention of a return on investment, right? Similar to how like Clone X, for example, they have a Clone X, they have a monolith, they have the shoes, the drops and everything like that. But in the end, what they're doing is actually selling product, right? They're selling sneakers, hats, hoodies, and then you also get an NFT that goes along with that. And not always do you expect a return on investment, right? And so that's the thing I look for, right? If there's all these mechanics, but then there's nothing at the end, it's kind of like, mm, well, what's the value there, right? But if there's something and they're actually building something, you don't even really know what they're building quite yet, right? And it all, it's they're still looking for product market fit. But that's something that I've been thinking about quite a bit. And then my buddy Alex from Valhalla, he recently had a tweet. He was like, you know, the VC meta for NFT founders did not start recently. Most of these massive rounds were done in January and we've all 
all been quietly building. Seasoned founders who are used to three to five year product roadmaps are looking. Competition is going to be insane in the next bull run. So this is quite interesting because I actually think it's true, right? Right now, the narrative, right? Narrative is different from what's happening from in reality, but the narrative is like, oh, you just got to look for the companies that have like millions of dollars of VC funding. That's the one that's going to be successful, right? It's kind of accurate to how, how it's the narrative is happening right now, but you have to understand that in order for these founders and these teams to raise all this money, they probably have been working for a long time. It's not like they just raised all this money in like September, probably been doing it since like January, February, March and stuff like that, especially when the market was hot, where it was easier to raise money for like idea, right? And just a team without a really a real product. Personally, I think it's good for the space, but also makes the space harder for some is that you're going to get founders who are used to building tech startups and they're going to be entering the space and they're literally going to be like, I'm going to build a technology startup with a layer of NFTs on top of it. And we're just going to go ham. And then we're going to build this like crazy company, right? Which is great for customers, people that want product and services, because now you have like real teams trying to build something real substantial. That's not just like a rug pull, right? Which I respect. The challenging part is that if you're a smaller, you know, project founder who is not raising millions of dollars right off the bat before you even have a product, then it's a little more difficult for you to compete, right? Because if you raise, let's say, you know, $5 million, for example, right off the bat, then you can hire the best of the best that you can get in any country, right? Whereas, you know, if you're a smaller project founder, you're like, well, I don't really have millions of dollars. Maybe you have tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars. So your pool of what you're able to hire and things like that is a little more difficult, right? And we've seen this in web two, where, you know, you can be a small software company and kind of grow that organically that way. It's going to be a little slower, but you definitely can do it. And then you're going to have people that raise like $20 million off the bat, and then they just can spend so much money on everything. And then they can probably get to the end goal potentially faster, right? And although there are also pros and cons of raising money, but that's pretty much how the game goes, whether it's web two or web three, money does make things go faster. It could also mean that teams are a little more sloppy, but for the right teams with the right founders who are very efficient in how they allocate capital, it's going to be very competitive, right? And so in 2023, for example, if there's a bull market then or 2024, it's going to be a lot more obvious to see, you know, which are the good teams and which ones at rogue pole. Whereas like 2021, like literally like anything was going up, but now it's going to be like, people are actually going to think about what they buy before they buy. Right. And they could just be like, okay, well, who's backing it? You know, what's the team? What's their experience? You know, are they docs? Right. I mean, these things are pretty common now, but I think they're going to be more obvious because I even think like D gen mints and things like that are still going on every single day. And it's like literally gambling. Right. But um, if there's more like high quality teams that you can bet on and it's very competitive and there's like a bunch of them, then the landscape is going to change for sure, which is great because like the scammers and ruggers are going to have a harder time like minting out, but then hopefully they just disappear. Now in other news, Binance recently made a pretty major low key announcement where they're going to auto convert uh, USDC, USDP, and then all these other stable coins into Binance USD. I'm sure there's reasoning for this, like liquidity, and maybe they're like, oh, you know, people don't really use these other stable coins as much. So let's just put them on our stable coin, right? Like they could they use like USDT, but it's interesting because if you're Binance, obviously you want people to use your products and if you have your own stable coin and you're the largest exchange in the world you might as well just put everybody on your stable coin to make it you know the most stable in a sense right that's an interesting move i wonder how the crypto community feels about that that they're kind of being forced to convert into binance usd of course you know there's options to you know take your money out and whatever if you don't agree with it now i'm not super deep in the stable coin world and the altcoin world as you know we're more focused on the nft side but i just want to give you a little something that's a little different that does affect the nft market you know indirectly right and by the way, if you want the latest news on what I'm talking about or just my personal thoughts, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Patrick Dang. Link is also in the description. Now, Artifact Studios, once again, dripping out latest news and updates of what they've been coming out with, which is smart, right? Because you don't want to play all your cards right off the bat. You want to have like updates, you know, every other day so that people continue to talk about it. Basically, there's a sneak peek over here where it's kind of like a user interface where you can select the clothes that you purchased from Artifact Studios and then you're able to equip it onto your clone and have it in different poses and it has like rarities and things like that. This is actually pretty cool because before I was like, well, why would somebody buy a sock and then like put it on their clone X? It doesn't really make sense, right? Like a sock. But when you look at the models itself, you're like, that kind of does make sense, right? So if you're wearing like these shorts, you want to have socks that go with your sneakers, right? If you don't have socks, then it doesn't look as cool. It's going to be interesting to see like, you know, there are people that are going to want to rock the physical products in real life. I remember I saw this random tweet. It was like the internet started as an escape from reality. But now because our internet is our reality, going out and doing things in a real world is our escape from the internet. If you think about it, the average person probably lives their life on the internet. I know for me, a lot of my relationships I've built over time, definitely built on the internet. Like I'm in Vietnam, right? But I mean, people all over the world, of course, I, you know, I still go outside, go to the gym and things like that. But like more and more, our lives are becoming more digital. Our digital identity literally is like blending with who we are as a person. And with the advancement of technology, I think it's just becoming more and more obvious that that's going to be the case. So definitely see more of the value of having like um, actually cool 
clothes in the metaverse, like putting on your clone X. You know, anything an artifact does, I feel like they are definitely innovating in the space and a lot of people are looking at what they do and trying to copy them and for their businesses, right? And you know, another sentiment about artifact is that I feel like recently, a lot of my personal friends are suddenly buying clone Xs. As you know, I bought one maybe like, I think two weeks ago because I really liked what they were doing. The price was, you know, in my range when it, it dipped quite a bit. And then I was like, okay, you know, I'll buy one, right? And then after I bought one, like a couple of my friends bought one. They're like, oh, how come Patrick bought one? I feel like there is a momentum in artifact. You know, recently been getting invited into different groups and things like that of like clone X holders. And there definitely is a wave of people like coming into clone X. A lot of it is because they get attracted to like what the team is building in terms of like actually building something that people will buy and use and can generate revenue. And then also I think the people that see that, you know, they're kind of like more business savvy and they're like, oh, maybe the people that hold it are, you know, also business savvy as well. So I think this is kind of like the snowball effect that is happening. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is a tweet by Herman, who is a co-founder CEO of Improbable. And Improbable is the company that is doing all the tech when it comes to other sides. So if you've ever seen those demos where there's like, you know, a bunch of bored apes like running around fighting a coda, you know, they're the company that put the tech together to actually make that happen, which is very, very impressive to have all those people playing a game at the same time and they all see each other, right? He recently wrote this long thread, which I found very interesting, but I'm going to give you the quick breakdown so we don't have to like read through the whole thing line by line, right? So essentially he's saying that, you know, there's a lot of projects, especially over the last year, they promised like MMO, RPG, MMO, this and that, economy, blah, 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 blah. In the end, he's like, yeah, dude, most of them aren't going to work, right? Because in the NFT space, a lot of people don't really, you know, haven't really studied like MMO RPGs. They haven't really studied how the gaming industry works. And it's actually quite easy, right? You can read a couple books about gaming, you have a gist. But for the most part, games are one of the hardest forms of entertainment to create, right? Harder than movies, harder than music, harder than a lot of things, right? Because it's innovation and tech, then you have to have IP and story, then it has to be fun, then you have to like do marketing to actually get people to play the game. So it's like impossible level hard to like actually create like a, you know, hit selling game. And, and I also agree with the sentiment where you have a small team that's like, you know, five people, no gaming experience, and they promise MMO anything. It's like, how? How are you going to do it, right? Because you don't even have the staff to do it. Literally, even if you work like 50 hours a day, you literally are incapable of doing it, right? Unless you hire the right people. Even the big time studios have a difficult time doing it as well. So if someone promises you a triple A game, they better have like plus 30 million to actually ship a serious game and pay for the servers and everything to actually make that hot quality. And that's triple A, right? So if you have a team that promises like this and that, and they only have like five people and they pretty much like say like, hey, we're going to sell a land and then we're going to make like a mill or two and we're going to build a game. It's like, no, you're not because you're not going to build a triple A game with that. It's like literally impossible with that budget you're gonna build some kind of game and it's not probably no one's gonna play it most likely i'm not saying like gaming projects with low budgets cannot succeed like you see like hades for example on steam did extremely well for a small team small budget but it's not an mmorpg right they play to their strengths and what they can do you know the point is like a lot of these games take a long time to create you're actually better off not even minting it and just waiting for the price to pump up because there's narrative and then it's obviously going to go down because the team can't promise anything because whatever the team promises literally will take them years to build so you might as well just buy it during a bear since it's going to take years to build you probably have up and down cycle so if you really believe in something you might as well just wait for when things are dying down you buy it for cheap if you really believe in a team there's really no point holding an nft in the beginning and taking all that risk when you have to wait for like you know four years before the game comes out now if the nft has a mechanic where they can pump the floor price for example you have one nft that creates a token then you mint another nft and everything's pumping it's going crazy that's different right because you're you're playing based on speculation and, and hype but you have to understand that that's different from waiting four years before a game actually comes out right those are two very very different things. One is speculation, narrative, and perceived value. The other one is actually creating value over the long run. So definitely understand like if you're investing in NFTs, trading NFTs, know what you're doing. Don't think that you're buying into an MMO and you're gonna like, you know, get taxed because you're gonna make money because you bought this piece of land and everyone who fights on that piece of land is gonna give you a percentage of the income, right? It's like, well, that probably won't happen until like five years from now. And then even if they built it, are people gonna play? So many questions, so much risk. That's pretty much everything we gotta cover for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications notifications and I will see you in the next one.